So this is Australia, and this comes from an incredible study of um, herbarium specimens, thousands of records of where algae live across both the west coast of Australia and the east coast, and most of their ranges are shifting southward, which makes sense if Australia is warming, which it is. Um, the problem being that what's below Australia? Oblivion. So these, these seaweed are not shifting into a new happy home. I mean, they're shifting into the Southern Ocean, so they're going to be extinct. And the same is true for lots of critters ultimately, so they can't rain shift forever. Corals have been moving from the Keys. They're now off Fort Lauderdale. Even Jupiter, where I grew up, Jupiter to Cuesta, Florida, um, we're seeing corals that haven't been there in thousands of years. And they'll rain shift up to, you know, a little bit farther north, um, Hope Sound, Jacksonville maybe. They're not coming to North Carolina, even if the, it gets warm enough, because we have no appropriate substrate. There's no hard substrate in 10, 20 feet of water out there. We have big rivers that dump a lot of muddy sediment onto the reefs. So it's an inappropriate habitat habitat in other ways, even though the temperature will be just fine for them here in 50, 80 years. Um, this is not just an interesting ecological phenomena, it's a huge issue in fisheries right now. Um, so the fish that you catch are moving to a new place. Um, this is a, a study that came out in 2013 and um, so let's just look at lobster. The, this is lobster right here. And these green dots are essentially where the population was at each year. And oh, they started out here, and they're essentially moving here. So the lobster populations are moving north. Um, these are Pacific cod. They're moving out this way. Skates are moving down the coast of California. So they're all moving to um, higher latitudes in general. And it's not necessarily a problem um, globally, but locally it's a huge problem because the fishermen in New Bedford, Massachusetts have lobster traps. They don't have rods and reels. They don't have ships to go out and catch the fish that move in. So that means a complete retooling of the local fishery because pretty soon, I mean, the, the Canadians will be excited about this because they'll get the Maine lobster. We're not going to have lobster in Maine, New Hampshire. And they're already gone from Rhode Island in 50 years. So that's a big social shift. And it's not just like the equipment, right? It's cultural. So these people have been lobstering for generations. So it's a big change. And NOAA and organizations that manage fisheries are really grappling to deal with that kind of change now. So this is where ecologists get really excited. So the migration of these species is essentially creating what we call no analog communities. So these are communities that, as far as we know, have never existed in the history of the Earth. So they're combinations of animals that have never existed. And we're mixing up a whole bunch of animals that have no evolutionary or ecological history with each other. So they're kind of naive to each other. And you know, species interactions are generally well-tuned you know, over evolutionary history. Prey respond to their predators by evolving defenses to reduce predation. Predators then respond to the prey with new, new strategies to catch them. You know, it's a kind of finely tuned, slow, uh, sl slow paced arms race. Um, but when we mix a bunch of stuff together, we don't know what's going to happen. And so that's what we're doing this natural experiment. This is Antarctica. It's an incredibly unique place. So the continental shelf around Antarctica going from shallow water, you know, 10 to 50 feet down to hundreds of meters is incredibly unique. It's been essentially predator free for we think 30 to 50 million years. So a long, long time. Because the water is too cold for the metabolism of predators that we call them bone crushing predators. So things like fish, um, cra crabs, um, skates, rays, sharks, none of these things exist in the ocean in Antarctica. Um, so all the prey are just, they didn't have to evolve defenses. They're enormous. This is an amphipod. Isn't that creepy? It's the size of your hand. We have amphipods here in North Carolina. They're like five millimeters long because they're hiding among seagrass from their, their predators. In the Antarctica, they don't need to worry about that. There's nobody to eat them. Um, so the bottom is just covered with all these defenseless prey. This is, anybody know what this is? Sea spider, it's a pycnogonid. We have these in North Carolina. They're all over the docks in Beaufort. You pick up some seaweed, you shake it out. There's all these cute little sea spiders. Um, in Antarctica, they're this big. And they're just kind of like lumbering along the seafloor because there's no problem, there's no threat. 
um, that is all going to change in our lifetimes. It's changing really quickly. So the warming of the waters around Antarctica, um, this is the only predator they have to deal with, the starfish, which is kind of a scary thing, but it's pretty slow moving. This is what's coming. Big, giant spider crabs. You know those things you see from Deadliest Catch? Those are invading the Antarctica continental shelf simply because of warming. And if it warms by another half degree Celsius, boom, they'll zip up there, as will sharks, rays, fishes. Um, and the whole system will change, obviously. This is, a, again, a unique system um, going back millions of years, and we'll lose that. And it's essentially a change in function, in process, in composition, in structure. And it's interesting to me as a scientist, but it's obviously problematic for a whole variety of reasons. 